I have this rather good look at the speaker system, 2.1 channel with an awesome sound quality for its price. I can't help to say that it's awesome. The speaker suddenly stopped working when I was working. It's broken and I've just bought it a few months ago. And I must say I'm quite disappointed. So let's see if I can fix this. I first thought it was the cable that connect the control pad to the amplifier, so I tried doing some continuity test to see that it was indeed broken. One of the wire was not connected to the amplifier. So I did a test so I know where's the damaged part, strip the jacket without damaging any wire, take the damaged wire out, strip it so the copper wire is shown, and test the connection. I could have just replaced the wire with a new one, but finding the same wire was really hard. So I gave up and chose this method instead. Nevertheless, I managed to fix all the connection. However, the speaker still refuses to give me sound. And so I need to take the whole board out of the box to see what's actually happening. And after dismounting the heatsink, inside I see a rather unpleasant soldering work made by someone in China. I mean look at the capacitor. They didn't even bother to solder through whole components properly in. And take a look at that thermal paste. What a generous company. Well, I didn't expect much anyway. There's also some supposed to be there components that aren't there. The heart of this whole system is this IC, which after magnification turns out to be an STA540 operational amplifier IC. Internet is a good friend here. To see what's happening, I open the datasheet, which by the way is very complete and useful. Thank you, Steam Electronics. Reviewing it carefully, there's something rather interesting on pin 7. Turns out the IC has a standby feature, which explains this STDBY marked pin on the control pad. For the amplifier to work, pin 7 or standby must be pulled high to 5 volts. This is where this thing is broken. You see, the system has a feature so that if we connect a headphone or an earphone to the 3.5mm jack on the control pad, the whole system automatically goes silent so the audio signal only goes to the jack. Same thing if you press the power button. So when the pad shows on, the standby pin of the control pad should be outputting 5 volt. If it's off, the standby pin of the control pad should output nothing and the IC turned off. Well, it seems that whether it's on or off, in my case, it's always outputting nothing. Therefore, the amplifier does nothing. And yeah, it's broken. To solve this, I'll need to bypass this whole function. So pin 7 of the IC is always high at 5V. But there is a warning in the datasheet. The maximum current that pin can handle is only 5mA, so we must limit the current going to that pin using some way. Luckily, the board we use has that feature already. After I probe things to make sure I'll do no unpleasant thing later, which by the way is a pain. Probing things has never been good. I set my power supply to 5 volts and connect it appropriately, and it works. So all I need now is to have a 5 volt source connected to the standby. How can I get 5 volt? Well, I can search for an about 5 volt ready to use voltage point on the circuit, which I then found in the preamplifier circuit. Its supply is about 6.25 volt, and the circuit should work fine with that. I solder a wire to connect that 6 volt to the standby, and I turn the speaker on. Here's a stupid thing I did. I thought this method doesn't work because the sound is all muffled up and it does something I'm too lazy to find out why. Well, the thing is, I forgot to connect the satellite speaker, and the only sound I heard there was just the subwoofer, which is okay, because the subwoofer only outputs low frequency, therefore the muffled up sound was normal. I didn't think so at that time, so I tried another method. There I got myself an LM7805 5V regulator IC, I mount the heatsink back and apply a generous amount of thermal paste unlike whoever made this before and lock it with the 3 screws, bolts and lock. 
The other one, scroll bolts and locks are going to be used and screw together with an LM7805 in it. So take that screw up, then put a lock, then the IC, then another lock, then the bolt. Then solder some wires to it accordingly and test it. This time I connect the satellite speaker. Wait. Works like a charm, but look at what this thing had done to my workbench. Awesome! So I want everything back to place and enjoy the now working speaker. Thank you. Like it if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more videos to come, and uh, um, I'll see you next time.